Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at two brand new legendary champions, a regular legendary and a void legendary. They're going to be coming to the game uh, today, actually tying in, maybe it's even live right now by the time you're watching this, tying in with episode nine of Call of the Arbiter. So pretty exciting stuff. Uh, and both of these champions, why are you going to be excited about them? You might be saying, oh, I'm never going to get them. Well, both of these champions are going to be appearing in 10x events planned in the nearest future. Check out this guy as well. Um, <clears throat> the first one is going to start tomorrow, okay? So for this, this is the Lady of Ireth. I'll show you her kit in a second. Uh, she, uh, she's going to be in a 10x event for Sacred Shards tomorrow. That's the 14th of July. It's Friday. So Friday and Saturday, I believe. Yeah, Friday and Saturday, she'll be in a 10x event from Sacred Shards overlapping the 2x event for sacred shards that is part of this fusion right so we have 2x where is it oh it must be in uh must be in tournaments uh here we go load please there we go yeah champion chase tournament so the newt fusion the champ chase tournament starts tomorrow we'll have 2x sacreds and for the friday saturday Gonna kind have of 10x for this new champion as well. So there's a decent chance a lot of people are going to get this champion, right? A lot of people are gonna be pulling shards because you need to for Newt uh, to get the void, right? The void epic to fuse into him. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Also, little tip here again for you guys. You can fuse up your uh, rares into your epics to get bonus points during the champion chase. That can help you out. So that can be a little tip to help do it. And you will also be able to fuse Newt during clan versus clan, if you want to get those CVC points in as well, just be really careful with the timing. Be really, really careful. Double, triple check it all uh, just to make sure that you do get infused. If you miss this timer, it is gone for good. And you, <laughs> you're going to be <laughs> very upset. Let me tell you, very upset. So let us check out, boom, the skills here of the Lady of Ereth, a champion that a lot of you might end up pulling this weekend. Um, I think it's, what is it, a rough rule of thumb, is it about a 6% chance now? Um, I'm, I'm a bit out of, out of tr I haven't quite tracked the updated stats. I think it's roughly about a 6% chance that you would get Lady of Irath during her 10x event if you get a legendary during the, the 2x sacreds. So something like about a 6%, I think. She's legendary, spirit affinity support champion for the Sylvan Watchers. So that's cool, new faction. Their faction crypt is coming out very, very soon. Baybolt, her A1, attacks one enemy, instantly activate one random continuous heal buff on all allies at less than 85% HP. Actually, one thing to note, she doesn't need that many books either, so that's kind of cool. Bit of damage here. Um, that seems kind of nice, Hook, just instantly activate the continuous heal, get some of that healing out earlier. Cool. Uh, Mistwood healing, her A2, four books to a three turn cooldown, remove all debuffs from a target ally, then heal them by 40% of their max HP. This heal can be critical. If the target ally is not fully healed, puts block damage on them for two turns. If the ally is fully healed, fills their turn meter by 50%. This is pretty interesting. They are both very powerful effects, right? I'm thinking, you know, for Arena, actually, that's really nice. You can get block damage on somebody, keep them alive, or give them a big turn meter boost and help them do damage. That's cool. Alongside a cleanse, big single target heal. That one's pretty interesting. I think this might have some potential as well for some fun stuff in Demon Lord Clan Boss. If you could speed tune it with a, let's say, a block damage composition where your team is never going to take damage, you could reliably tune this to be that 50% turn meter every three turns and maybe mix up your speed tune. Is that something that's worth doing? I don't know, but it's something that probably is possible. Uh, rhythmic Strength, five turn books to a three turn cooldown but strengthen buff and a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Aegis of the Forest, uh, two turns, books to a zero turn cooldown. Place a shield buff equal to 15% of this champion's max HP on the ally with the lowest HP for two turns at the start of this champion's turn. And increases ally HP in all battles by 30%. That's her aura. Lady of Ereth, what do we think? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Look, she seems like a... She doesn't stand out to me as being like an amazing champion for any one thing. She just stands out as being a, generally speaking, a, a good champion. She's helping you stay alive with strengthen and some shields. Um, she's got like a cool single target heal. She's got AOE heal with continuous heal as well. Uh, she's just a general support, like very general <laughs> is my vibe. Very, very general. 
Um, she's going to be helpful for progression in lots of dungeons, lots of Doom Tower bosses, maybe kind of helpful in Arena as well. Uh, but I think for end game, for late game, she doesn't have the specialization uh, to really stand out, would be my thought on her. So there you go. That's sort of Lady of Aerath. Seems solid enough. Honestly, for most people, if you did pull her, how many books is it? Two, five, nine books isn't bad. That's not bad. She could be a very helpful progression champion. But yeah, I think end game, not quite so strong. Now, <laughs> speaking of strong in end game, though, we have this fine fellow. Uh, let me grab this. So if I flip over here, so <laughs> they actually had to send us a PDF with two pages because he has so many skills. This guy is so stacked is actually insane. Let's zoom in a little bit. This is Vulcanan. He is a void legendary attack based champion from the undead horde faction. Uh, again, bearing in mind, they said um, that there's going to be 10x events in the nearest time. And the first one is tomorrow. My guess would be I could easily see them doing a 10x for this Void Legendary, this new Void Legendary, during Personal Rewards CVC on Tuesday or Wednesday. I could totally see that happening. What do you guys think? I mean, that would be my bet. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, I don't know, something like that. Or maybe the following week, just randomly in the middle of the week or something. Because, look, it's a new shiny Void Legendary. People are going to want to get him just because he's a new shiny Void Legendary. You know, people will pull for a 10x event for it. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. So, by the way, in terms of Lady of Ereth, what do they say about her? They said she is a versatile support slash healer champion. Will come in handy no matter the location. Being part of the Sylvan Watchers faction might take a decent, uh, might take a spot of a decent support champion. So even, even Plarium's pretty vague about Lady, Lady Vera. She's like, yeah, she's just sort of generally good, I guess. <laughs> General support. Uh, for Valkanen, Valkanen is a total PvP badass with some unique mechanics down his sleeve. Uh, he, he does, you know, okay, he does have sleeves. So that, that's confirmed. Some of which might fully blossom when playing manual. Uh, his unique mechanic is killing his own allies to gain some benefits. Yikes! Exclamation mark. You better have some champs that revive on death buffs on your team. He definitely has some dark vibes to his skill set as he's placing a shield buff on himself when someone dies in a battle, ignores resistance when having dead allies, and increases the value of his shield from dead champions max HP skull emoji. Oh my god. So this guy's got a lot going on. Let's take a look. Dread Scythe A1. Attacks one enemy, ignores shield. That's nice. That's actually quite nice. Has a 60 bucks to 80% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. And has an 80 bucks to 100% chance of applying a debuff spread effect. Taking two random debuffs from the target and placing them on all enemies under hex. So I presume he does the duration increase first and then he spreads. Like that could be kind of nifty. I will say, he, at a quick glance, he does have a fair few amount of debuffs in his kit. I do think that the polymorph nerf makes this a bit more viable. Like, I've seen quite a lot of people now switching, like, their duchesses, their seafies and stuff like that into their pythons, into things like life harvest, you know? Stuff sort of along those lines. Moving a bit away from polymorph, there's still plenty of polymorph out there but it's not quite as prevalent as it was before. And that does open up the door a bit more for champions with debuffs like this. Hex of Blades, four turn books to a three turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies. This attack does single target damage to each target individually rather than AoE damage. Uh, I think the reason that this is really nice, it might work with a couple of passives. I, the main one would certainly be Duchess Lilithu stands out. We're talking about Arena here, right? Duchess Lilithu, uh, she comes in and um, has the AOE, you know, damage reduction. So he bypasses that. I wonder, I like, I wonder if this would do some funky stuff, like you could kill, uh, what's her face? I've forgotten her name already, like the one of the most OP champs in the game, Mariska. Like if Mariska was in the lead using the speed aura and you killed her and she revived all dead allies, like, could you, I, I don't know how that interacts normally with AOE attacks. But maybe it would kill her, proc this, and then it would one-shot everybody else and they wouldn't get revived or something. I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure exactly how that works. It's certainly interesting. So there's there's more to be seen with this one. But it's uh, certainly it's going to bypass those uh, AoE damage reduction masteries and passives like Duchess that are out there. Before attacking has an 80 bucks to 100% chance of placing a Hex debuff on all enemies for two turns. Ignores 20% of each enemy's resistance for each dead ally. And the damage of this skill increases by 10% for each debuff and each enemy. So, again, it's going to depend exactly how hard he hits. 
Um, but hopefully this hits pretty hard. Putting out the hex is kind of interesting. Again, you've got that polymorph fear, but it's not quite as bad anymore. Uh, he does kind of need dead allies. You're probably building this guy with quite a bit of damage and not that much accuracy. Mm. Let's say you've got one dead ally, ignoring 20% resist. It might not make it enough of a difference. With, with two, 20%, with three dead allies, 60%. You would think that putting out the Hex debuff isn't even that important anyway, so it's a bit funky, right? Is Hex that useful in Arena? Not massively. He's got a debuff spread, but it doesn't seem that important. Hmm, so we'll see. And yeah, doing more damage, though, for each debuff and each enemy, that could ramp, ramp up pretty quickly to quite a lot of damage. Again, this comes back to how dead the Polymorph meta is, and will champions with debuffs become more powerful, or have they become more powerful? You tell me right? You tell me, have those champions become more powerful? You let me know. Uh, so there you go, Hexablades. Death's Bargain. Five turn books to a three turn cooldown. Um, let me scroll down a bit so you can see the full text. Target an ally. <laughs> if the ally is alive, kills them and unlocks a secret skill. Malice Unleashed also places a 25% weaken debuff for two turns and True Fear debuff for one turn on all enemies. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked then fills this champion's turn meter by 75%. So that's pretty cool. So kill one of your team, AoE Weaken and True Fear, that cannot be blocked or resisted, and give him a 75% turn meter boost. That's kind of awesome, actually, if the secret skill is good. That's cool. If the ally is dead, heals this champion by 50% of the dead ally's max HP. If all allies are dead, also unlocks a secret skill, Malice Unleashed. Places a shield buff on this champion for two turns. Value of the shield is equal to any surplus heal. If the champion already has a shield buff, the value of the shield is increased by any surplus heal. Then fills this champion's turn meter by 75%. So you're getting the 75% turn meter any, uh, either way. So yeah, I guess if your team is a bit behind, you're like, oh man, uh, I can't, I can't, I don't want to kill one of my allies. We've already got someone dead. I actually want to revive and, and stabilize. You could use this move to heal and it's going to give him a shield equal to any surplus heal so either he'll just heal himself or you might get a nice shield and give him turn meter or you can kill one of your allies and get a secret skill plus do the aoe debuff so i think generally you want to gonna want to kill an ally from the looks of it um and then this becomes a great option if one of your if all of your allies are dead it's like oh give yourself a big shield and uh yeah unlock the secret skill anyway what is the secret skill Malice Unleashed, secret skill, attacks one enemy. Before attacking, steals all buffs from the target. This effect cannot be resisted. If the target has attack equal to or higher than this champion's attack, he's attack based, so that would be their, their nuker. This attack gains a damage bonus, uh, sorry, a bonus damage multiplier equal to the target's attack, not applicable to bosses. So I guess he just like steals. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure exactly how much damage that's going to be, but that should add a ton. I mean, look, if you're going to be hitting a champion that has more attack than him, I, I think he's going to kill them anyway, right? You're going to steal all their buffs. It can't be resisted. You're going to hit them. Like, they're going to die. If they've built lots of attack, they're going to die, no matter what. Right? Right. So, if the target's attack is less than this champion's attack, you will ignore 50% of the target's defense. This attack also ignores block damage, unkillable shield and ally protection buffs, places a block revive debuff if the target is killed. That is, I think that's really cool. So that's where the exciting thing is. So steal all their buffs, can't be resisted. Again, if polymorph is an issue, that's scary. If it's not, then this is just super strong. And most of the time, you're just going to ignore 50% defense, ignore nearly all defensive buffs, right? Um, yeah, that's basically... It, Increased defense is going to help, but he's going to ignore 50% of the defense anyway. Uh, strengthen is going to help, but he's going to ignore most of them. And then block revive. This is a big thing. So I think this is why this champion could end up being pretty good, is block revive. This is a, sort of a meta-breaking thing at the moment. Block revive champions in live arena do really, really well. Uh, there are good answers as well to Taras and Marishka. So adding more of these in, I think is a great thing, right? Marishka can't revive them if they've got block revive on simple as that so that's very powerful and this becomes very scary as well for live arena so i guess the idea is you come in he takes a turn kills one of your allies puts unblockable irresistible aoe true fear gives himself turn meter and then he's like yo next turn i'm stealing all the buffs and i'm gonna one shot someone probably and block revive and bam i'm gonna start rolling over your team that's pretty cool 
Bantam, who, by the way, has a 30% speed in Arena Battle Aura as well. It's the best speed or second best in the game. That's equal to Arbiter, Prince Kaimar, um, and then Lord Shazar has a 32%, I think. So he's like top four speed. I mean, yeah, he, he's tied second place best speed aura for Arena. That's pretty big. Phantom Bulwark is passive. Uh, so the passive, let's look at the passive effect first. Whenever an enemy hits this champion while they're under a shield buff, puts a random debuff on the attacking enemy. Fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, petrification, sleep, and stun debuffs are placed for one turn. Any other debuffs are placed for two turns. Ignores 20% of enemy resistance for each dead ally. Cannot place boss exclusive debuffs, sheep, or smite. So basically anything goes except for boss debuff, sheep, or smite. So this is super random. Super random. Super unreliable. But it does mean that shields are going to be pretty good with him. So I guess, you know, you've got someone with bolster set in the team or you put him in with like a Necret, the Grace or something. It's going to be pretty disgusting, right? Every time he's attacked, uh, he's going to be... Whenever an enemy hits, so even multi-hits are going to stack up multiple buffs. And if he does get these hard crowd control buffs, they're very powerful. Also one of the only sources of petrification in the game, though it's unlikely to happen, I suppose. That's interesting. Um... Mostly going to be good, I suppose, for locking down the enemy damage dealers, maybe debuffers, who aren't going to be building much resistance. Yes, you'll ignore resistance for allies that are dead, but I think most of the time that's not going to be super useful. The active effect here has a one-turn cooldown, only a one-turn. Place a shield buff on this champion each time an ally or enemy champion dies. The value of the shield is equal to 50% of the dead champion's max HP. This shield cannot be removed, stolen, or transferred. How long does it last? It doesn't say. Let's guess two turns. If this champion's already under a shield buff, the value of the shield is increased by 50% of the dead champion's max HP. Does not activate when a boss or minion dies. Again, that seems pretty, that's pretty nuts. So no matter what, like he comes in, when he kills an ally with this and he does this AOE stuff and boosts his turn meter, he's going to get a shield equal to 50% of the champion you killed. If he kills an enemy or if any enemies die, he's going to get 50%. That's pretty nuts. He's going to have a massive shield. And let me know what you think about Vulcan N. To me, this guy looks absolutely bananas. I'm very excited. The Hex definitely seems a bit underwhelming. Like, yeah, you've got some of that debuff spread stuff coming in. But that seems honestly very unimportant. For Arena, it seems to me that you're pretty much, for the most part, just building him with tons of damage and probably pretty good speed and building a, a scary speed team. He comes in, whatever you know, sacrifices one of your allies and, and bam, does his secret skill kill somebody. He's getting massive shields every single time and he's going to start blocking revive on enemies. He feels like sort of more to macabre with more purpose, more control. Uh, and that seems honestly pretty scary to me on top of being void. Um, so yeah, this guy, he looks like a, he looks like a monster. <laughs> Let me know what you think. To me, he looks like a freaking monster. And there you go. Two new legendary champions coming, well, today probably live at the time you're watching this video uh let me know what you think again lady of Ereth to me fairly generic but seems solid enough support not too exciting to me but a solid progression champion that's all and then Valkanen, he's the exciting late game pretty much any point in the game one that could totally change up your arena teams in a massive way your live arena strategy in a huge way um this guy could have big end game impacts i'm very excited to see how hard he hits uh, but yeah, this guy could be nuts. <laughs> it could be so good. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.